So this video is about the 50 inch televisions in the living rooms that have a Samsung television and Foxtel. So guests can sometimes get funny messages that say cannot connect to server um, or the TV just will not load up. So the first thing we're going to do is get the remote control, the Foxtel remote control, and we're going to make sure we point it at this sensor. And the TV should come on. Now if the TV doesn't come on, we do want to check something here. We want to make sure that the guest hasn't pulled this plug out. This is really common that they pull these plugs out. And if they pull that plug out, the Foxtel just will not work. Now I'm just going to mute this television. So the TV's come, come alive here and I'm just going to select On Demand. Now On Demand uses the internet. So, as you can see, it's searching and it just will not work. Now, this is when we get a server issue. Sometimes the TV will get to this point and it just doesn't work, or sometimes it's a black screen and it just won't start up and it says server issue. So, so the problem with this television is, is that the modem is not giving the data transfer. So as we can see with this particular mode, and we've got a red light. So what that means is that there's no data transmission to the television. So this can be numerous problems. This can be an issue with the modem itself, or it can actually be um, an issue with the service provider. So I'm just gonna have a quick look around to see if I can find any common problems with this. I know I've got power. So, cause I've got a red light. I know I've got some data transmission because I've got some flickering lights here. So I'm just going to have a look at the back. Oh, look at this. And I find that this cable is disconnected. So this is the, the LAN cable and it goes into the blue socket. So now we connect that back in. And if we give it a few minutes, that light will go blue. When it goes blue, that means that we've got full data transmission. So there we go. So we've got a blue light. So if we go back to the television, the television should if we just go back to menu, we go to on demand again, hopefully it starts to work. So we can see it's starting to immediately load up channels. So that means that the internet side of the TV is working. And we can just scroll down to Titanic because Titanic's always a favorite. We can see it's working. So it should load up and it's working. So that's something that's really good to look at. So if we've got no internet, the on-demand won't work. And sometimes the TVs themselves will not reboot up and it says cannot connect to server. Now, if we do get the cannot connect to server message, the way we resolve that is we get the remote control and we press the red button C314 and it takes us to this menu. This is the menu settings for the internet. We're going to scroll down to Wi-Fi, select Wi-Fi, and then it's going to load up all of the available internet networks within the area. Now it's going to look for about 20 networks. This is found 11. The first two networks are generally the best signal. As you can see here, it says quality 100. That means 100%. And what we're looking for is Foxtel. Now, if we don't have, if the modem that's in the cabinet that's back over here, if there is an issue with this modem, so we don't have a blue light and we cannot get it to work, we don't want to connect to that modem. So we disconnect that modem by turning the button off at the back. Now the modem is dead. The TV will always try to connect to that modem. It's, it's like its primary source of data. So we're going to go back to the television again. And we're just going to scroll back through the menu and we're going to look for another Foxtel link. Hopefully we've got one. And you can see we're going through lots of different ones. So unfortunately we haven't actually got one here. So what we can do is we can connect to um, this apartment maybe. So, or we can connect to Foxtel. So I'm going to turn the modem back on and hopefully the signal 
comes back. So we're turning it back on with the button. That's done a full reset. We are going to wait until we get a blue line because when there's a red, red light, there nothing actually happens. So it can take up to two minutes sometimes. And you can see with the telephone box, the telephone box is also displaying no internet. Because there's, so now it's connecting, you can actually see this is trying to pick up the internet. So connections are happening. It's just like confirming the network. So it's, and as soon as we get a blue light, we should be good to go. All of this information will help you resolve other issues. So for example, if the internet in the room isn't working, you know, this will tell you where to look. As you can see, we've got a static blue light. Oh, it's just flashed again. It's thinking about it. It's trying to sort of trying to set itself up. Again, it does take some time. Again, the blue lights come on on the telephone ATA box. And um, you know, we should get a blue light quite soon. There's no point trying to do anything until you get that blue light because you're just fighting a losing battle. You have to have a blue light. So it's taking its time, this one, but we will get there. So you do have to be patient. There we go. So we've got a blue light. So that took probably three minutes and that's really important. Sometimes it's 60 seconds. Sometimes it can be five minutes. So we go back to the television and we're going to go back to this menu. We're going to use the remote. We're going to press these buttons and we're going to scroll down to Foxtel. We're going to, and then we're going to go to password. Now we need to press the up button to get uppercase and the password is FOX, so capital F, capital O, sorry I just messed that up, it's very easy to mess this up and unfortunately you can't backspace so it's really annoying, so you just, so it's capital F, Have a low, and you see it's they they are really fiddly, and it takes a little bit of practice. So capital, so if you toggle up and down, it changes from capitals to not capitals. So we want capital F, F, capital O, and we want to toggle up. Then we want lowercase. X, lowercase t, and then it's 315-5592, and then we want to hit accept, and then you must highlight See, it says disconnect. That would normally say connect. So you would want to connect. We're actually connected to this already. So, um, so you'd hit connect, and that's how you join a new network. And then you just hit the exit button to turn it off. It's going to start the television up again. See, it's in configuration, waiting for reboot. Loading up. If at this point it doesn't really do anything, this can take two to three minutes. So these little icons here, these circles, that's the data transfer. That's it loading up off the internet. So if it just kind of stops, 
then you know you've got a problem. So hopefully this will load up. There we go, it looks like it's working. There we go, you've got two dots. Patience is the absolute key with these TVs. They do do very random things. Um, we do get guests fiddle around with them. And when the internet drops out, the televisions try to retune, so they create all sorts of random problems. But this will hopefully give you some kind of understanding of, of how they function. You can see it's loading up, it's doing its thing, so now you can see it's connecting to server. Now at this point, if you get that where it says cannot connect to server, again it goes back to that fault where there's no internet. So you need to either choose another network. Um, and if you choose another network, you can choose an apartment network. So it's the apartment number, and then the password is star, and then the apartment number. So for example, apartment 12345, the password would be star 12345. And as you can see, it's now working. Um, and back to the main menu. So patience is absolutely the key. So a little bit of a recap. So if the television is not responding, make sure the remote control is working by pressing a button and getting the red light at the top. Make sure that this sensor is plugged in at the back here. So common, so common. So we see this all the time. Um, people seem to fiddle. We have guests think that they're cameras, so they, they will block them with a baseball cap or something like this. Um, that's the most common problem. And then always make sure, again, that it's plugged in and you've got a green light. That's really common too. We see that problem all the time on the, living, on the TVs in the bedrooms um, because as you push the TV back, it actually um, pushes the, uh, the wall bracket. So, and I'll show you that. We'll have a look at this television. I'll see if this is saying oh, this room doesn't have a television, so I can't show you. Um, we'll actually have, have a look in this particular bedroom. There might be one in here. So we've got a television here. So this is a, a good example. So as you can see, and this is a great example. So you can see that the brackets actually pushed out. So you've got to make sure those are plugged in. That's really, really common. So we try to, you know, we there's not really much we can do about that. So it's a little bit of a pain. Um, but if that's not plugged in, the Foxtel won't work. And again, this bedroom TV has a Foxtel remote, which is this one. And if you're unsure if it's the correct remote, just have a look on the back of the television. There should be a Foxtel box. And the setup on these is exactly the same as the televisions in the, in the living room. Now, sometimes the bedroom TVs do not have Foxtel. They just have a standard Samsung remote. And, um, and they operate just like a standard television. We don't really have problems with those um, because all you're really looking for is that, that this cable here is plugged in, which is for the um, signal from the, from the building, and then that, the fact that it's turned on here. And you don't really get too many problems. So I'm hoping that gives you a little bit of an overview.